got the Sacramento Kings heading down to Miami to square off against the Miami Heat. Heat lane one and a half, uh, Kings plus one hundred total sitting at two thirty two. Man, I I know the Heat aren't a regular season team, and they've shown the ability to put it, you know, to kind of flip the switch and turn it on in the playoffs. But I don't know, man. This Heat team has looked pretty rough as of late. Seem kind of out of sorts, and the Kings also kind of a weird season. Uh, for the Kings C- came in with some hype, you know, last year, the whole light, the beam uh, that seemingly has cooled off, but then they've had some moments where they have popped up and looked like a good team, kind of both teams uh, for me, tough to get a complete grasp on, but uh, how say you, how say you, Chris, who do you like in this matchup? Yeah, I am going to bite the bullet here and go with the Kings as a short dog. Um, you know, I'll take them instead of money line because we're on the show and we don't get bonus points for that, but I don't think. <laughs> uh, taking the money line is a, is a bad idea here. I know it's at Miami and it's scary, right? Cause you got a Miami team who, you know, has made it far in the playoffs. They got that DNA, they got Spolstra. Um, but within the, in their last seven games, lost seven games in a row. And something that really jumps out is their three point shooting has just been horrid. Um, you know, they, they need Tyler hero to make more threes. They need a lot of guys to make more threes. And then, you know, we saw Jaime Yaquez not in, the lineup for a few games. I think he got injured or something was going on. And now that Jimmy's back, he's getting fewer minutes as well is uh, Jaime, which I don't think that's a good thing for this heat team. They were shown a lot of chemistry there for a little while. Yeah. And you know, Jimmy hasn't looked that great either. And they're facing a Kings team who, you know, this Kings team kind of up and down a little bit this season, but so far they are, you know, trending towards going over their uh, win total over the season, which would destroy my future bet on them, but that's okay because <laughs> I like them tonight. I mean, they're scoring over 60 points per game from um, two point land, or that doesn't sound right. No, over 60% shooting from two point land. Uh, and this is a team that doesn't need to shoot the three, right? They, they don't need to be the, that effective. They're going to get into the paint, they're going to create shots, and their offense has looked really good past week, very much like the Sacramento Kings we know that took them to the playoffs. If the Heat don't improve drastically from what we've seen offensively, I think this is a, a it could be a fairly easy game for the Kings to win as long as they show up and play their type of basketball. I don't, you know, again, I don't know what's going on with the Heat. I don't know if it's a Jimmy Butler thing not being totally there, and and eventually the Heat are probably going to turn this ship around. But I can't help but choose the Kings tonight. Yeah, and and you even listen to some of the the press conference stuff of Jimmy saying like, Hey, you know, I'll be ready for the playoffs. It's like, dude, we have, we have 82 games. We got to get in the yeah. playoffs. I, I think it's weird. You know, I think you can kind of get away with that somewhat if you're a veteran team, but once you start like vocalizing that, I think it sends a weird message to the te- to the rest of the guys on the team and can kind of get you in some funks. And it does seem like this Miami team, I, I grant it. I grant it. They're not a regular season team, but at some point, I, I don't know, man. They're not looking quite the same. Noobs, how say you? Heat Kings. Uh, just a really tough game. Chris did a great job of breaking down, you know, kind of the problems you have with both sides. Uh, I think it is Sacramento or pass here. Uh, I think I've mentioned before, I kind of run two models. One looks at the closing spreads from every game and kind of creates a market number. That has basically what we have here. It's a little closer to Miami a pick instead of Miami one and a half, but I think that's adjustment for just Sacramento haven't been on the road that long. But if I look at my actual numbers where I take a look at kind of the last 25, 30 games, look at actual data and pile it up, I have Sacramento like a four-point favorite in this game. And it's just, when I say that sort of dichotomy, it's hard to figure out, again, is the market just kind of waiting for Miami to become what it is? Is Miami just bad? I mean, at this point, we've yeah. seen them punt in the regular season. And I'm not surprised at the losing streak. They were closer to the six seed a a week or so ago, you could see them kind of rest in players. They're moving things around. Spolster is really uh, trying a bunch of stuff. They've uh, basically stopped shooting threes in high volume. What worked for them last year, they were this really high volume three point shooting offense. And now they've kind of gone to some mid range. They really don't attack the basket at all. So they've got to find some way to kind of move that stuff around. I think Spolster will eventually figure it out, but I'm certainly not betting on Miami anytime soon. It's Sacramento or pass for me. I just, I'm not really sure on that. The bet I do really like, um, DeMontis Sabonis, his points, rebounds, and assists total tonight um just 39 and a half i have this closer to 44 45 uh, 
the Kings have been playing much better. Sabonis is doing kind of exactly what he was designed to do. This sort of point center brings the ball up, can initiate offenses, picking up assists, attacking the rebound, uh, the boards offensively. I mean, some of his rebounding numbers are astounding. He had 26 rebounds against Memphis on Monday. He had 22 last Monday. Um, he had 20 plus on another Monday. Maybe I'll just bet Sabonis 20 plus rebounds on Mondays. That's got to be a thing. There, but definitely. At 39 and a half, it's a huge number. And for somebody that is only averaging only 20 points a game, you know, how do I know that I'm going to get those other 20 um, rebounds and assists time and time again, it happens. He just fills it up. There's no reason for him not to do that tonight. Bam out of bio matches up well with him, but that also means at the same time, uh, Sabonis can is, is not going to be overwhelmed by the size of Bam tonight. So Sabonis should be on the floor, a ton of minutes tonight and what should be a faster paced game. The way Miami's playing, give me Sabonis over 39 and a half points, rebounds and assists. Yeah, no, and and PRA is a uh, is a fun way to play this, where you're like, ah, maybe it's the points, but then also to your point, if like Bam's playing decent defense on him, that means he's probably going to end up creating some shots for some other guys. So you get it uh, via the assist market. So lock it up for noobs. Sabonis over thirty nine and a half PRA, and Chris on the Kings plus one and a half. 